Hi and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and part number two of the Academy 148 scale P47N Thunderbolt. Let's get busy. Hi and welcome back and today we're actually going to start on this kit. Academy P47N Thunderbolt. And uh, first thing we're gonna start is the cockpit assembly. Now, the plan is I am going to be cutting parts off and assembling them and uh, not so much of it on screen, but I will be cutting stuff off, talking about it a little bit, and then uh, moving on. I'm ready for assembly, but first I want to give a quick rundown on what I used to uh, paint the stuff. So I used Mr. Surfacer 1500 cut 50-50 with Mr. Leveling Thinner. I used MRP Interior Green World War II USA for the base coat. Then I used AK Real Color Black and Red Brown for the details. Uh, for the instrument panel, I just sprayed it with 1500 black cut 50-50 with Mr. Leveling Thinner and then did a dry brush of silver and that'll work. I also dry brush this stuff here, but all this is going to be closed in so I'm not too worried about getting into the gnarly details of it. So now I'm ready to start actually assembling these parts. Alrighty then, the cockpit has been assembled. Not too much to it. Basically, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six parts. So it's done, ready to roll, all painted up. So we can move on to step two, which is fuselage assembly. Now, whenever I test, did test fitting of the fuselage halves, I always like to do that, and I recommend it if you don't. Uh, just to make sure everything fits and in this case everything's pretty good except for the nose now it's already better than it was but what I did is I cut this pin off because I need to sand these mating surfaces down because when put together there's a gap right there where the hole is and where the pin was. So I cut that pin off so I can sand these edges smooth. Now what I did is I took it to the edge of my desktop and I can't really illustrate that without moving the camera. But I basically put it on the, being careful not to hit this pin here, I put it on the edge of the desk and started sanding. So it's already better than it was but it still needs some more. But as you can see here, more sanding dust here and here, which corresponds with here and here. So that tells me where this pin was and or where this hole was or is, uh, it's kind of bowed. Must be from the molding process, cooling, whatever, but it needs to be smoothed out. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it on the edge of the desk. I wanna get rid of that little bit of a gap. Another telltale sign when doing sanding like that is when I had it laid flat and I began sanding, I could see that this here and this here was starting to dull out from the sanding. As you can kind of see, there's a little bit of a sheen on this untouched plastic, but where it's sanded, it becomes dull. It was still shiny in here. So that told me that I didn't have it quite sanded down enough. And this you can see as well sanded here and here but this is still shiny that means that needs more sanding so I'll continue on with that and then we'll check the result and voila problem solved now just because it doesn't have a pin doesn't mean you can't get it aligned it's just a matter of eyeballing it gluing it you may have to touch up a little bit with uh, with a sanding stick but at least there's not a big gap to have to worry about all right so now I'm ready with that I am ready to uh, put this sheer cockpit in place. Let's 
turn it the proper direction, however. Okay, pretty straightforward fit. <clears throat> it rests in this little notch here and here, the bottom of the cockpit, and then this uh, rear armor plate here rests up against that little raised spot. So, pretty simple. So I'm going to work on that. I'll start gluing this uh, <clears throat> fuselage together, and then we'll come back. <clears throat> all right, the fuselage is all buttoned up, <clears throat> so i got to let it dry really well. Then I can uh, work on these seams a bit. It shouldn't be too bad, but I'll probably have to do some rescribing, which I'm really not looking forward to, considering this is uh, going to be a metal finish, but hey. You got to do what you got to do. So the next thing, uh, one, this one part here, C29, the gun sight, that I'm going to do after I'm completely done working on the fuselage. So next up are the wings. Now I've already done the, um, <clears throat> already painted the interior of the gear bay. And I have glued these gun covers partially. So what I did here, now this one here, this one's done. And it looks pretty good. Okay. So when they first get glued in, <clears throat> it's like the contour doesn't match quite right. So it needs a little bit of work. So what I did is I glued these two sides here, let that set up really well. Then applying the cement from the inside, I take this and use the, I have a soft pad on this one and not on this one. This one just fell off, but it actually works perfect in this case. Uh, the soft pad will fit here and then this part here I use to smash the uh, panel. The reason I glue it from the inside, that way I don't have to worry about glue on the outside getting marred by this clamp. But then I just uh, do that. It's nice and flat, holds it in place, and then whenever I take it off I have a nice flush panel. Keeping in mind that this is a removable panel, and I'm sure on the real thing it's pretty darn close. But with that in mind, I'm not too concerned if it's uh, a little bit off. Just so long as it's not a real big step or anything. But it, it worked pretty good. So I just do this and that. And like when I push on it here, there's no glue coming out. <clears throat> and I can just let it sit there for a second. Let it kind of gas off a little. And then... That was practically perfectly in place right now as it is, just by pushing on it. But I don't want to take a chance, so I'm going to clamp it like that, and boom, it's good to go. So then once that's done, then I can think about putting the wing halves together. But at this point, I need to make a determination as to how I'm going to do the stores, because holes need to be drilled. <clears throat> from the inside there's indentations in here I just use my little hand drill and uh, drill the holes out for the um, external uh, rocket launcher and the uh, mounting point for the bombs I just went blank I can't think of what it's called pylon pylon for the bomb or drop tank. <clears throat> so once you get that drilled and this dries up, then you can actually glue these things together. So that is what I'm going to work on next. Now it looks like it's going to be a really nice fit. But before I commit, I'm going to tape it up really tight like it's glued and I'm going to test fit these little bits here, which is where the uh, machine guns protrude from. I want to make sure that it fits right, and if I can make any alterations before I glue it on, 
that's what I want to do. All right, preliminary test fit. It fits really well. I just had to sand this bottom edge a little bit because I had a little bit of a lip going on. <clears throat> but everything else looks good. So uh, shouldn't have any issues with that. <clears throat> All righty then, let's take a look. That last little segment, I was test fitting this stuff, but I've since got the wings glued together, these parts glued in, and everything is looking good. I need to use a little bit of cement to kind of fill that in. But uh, it all went together pretty well. The wings, um, See, not that one, but this one here with the hole for the pitot tube. Just kidding, pitot tube. Um, when I just put them together, it was off, so I had to kind of flex the wing up a little bit and then use the clamp and clamped it really tight to keep it from sliding back down. That way I was able to get it all aligned. But I've since uh, sanded all these leading edges, trailing edges, the tips. Um, I put the uh, the, uh, lan the light lens in here. I should have painted it silver on the inside first, but I didn't. Um, I did get these lights in place, and I painted those with Tamiya Clears, according to the call-outs, which is red, green, and orange, or amber. Uh, so the wings, all glued together and ready to go. Horizontal stabilizers, same thing, glued together. Edges sanded down, and to do those, I used um, this thing here. This is a flexi file sander. I'm sure, most of you have seen these, but for those that haven't, brief explanation: it's this aluminum frame with the uh, little pegs on the ends here. It's they're machined in. Good grief. And you get these, uh, you can buy these separate, but it also comes with some in the kit. Kit comes, you know, in a package like this. Starter set. Frames and assorted files for every job. Um, <clears throat> you have a coarse one, which I've rarely needed to use. Then you've got this medium and this fine. And this is pretty fine. Basically, the way it works is... This fits into loops on the ends. And then for sanding curved surfaces, you can just sand away like that and you really minimize the uh, possibility of flat spots. Sand away, then you can, uh, they're fine enough that I've discovered that it doesn't really uh, mess up the surface detail too much as long as your seam isn't like really obnoxious like if it's been lined up good enough um, you don't have to worry about the uh, the panel line detail disappearing now what I use I use these here and I don't remember the brand but they're these scribers and this back edge here is very finely sawtoothed so sometimes I'll go through here and I'll kind of, you know, make sure my line is good and then I'll take the little tip and rescribe it. And I'll scribe it a little bit deeper before I even start sanding. That way when I sand it down, it, it stays there and all I have to do is just touch it up. So there's a little bit of a tip. And again, this stuff is like not anything that I've discovered, you know, on my own or anything like that. It's just you know, seeing other people do things, expounding on it, uh, just copying it, whatever. So, it's just pretty common practice. So anyway, uh, I've got all that stuff sanded down, so I'm pretty much ready to start assembling wings, uh, horizontal stabilizers, some of the other smaller parts on the airframe so I can start thinking about priming it. So that is that. Now, one thing I did notice and I did work on is where the uh, parts come together right here. I used this 
scalpel and uh, because it's a curved it's curved instead of straight I was able to I scrape and scrape and scrape that down and kind of create a bit of a concave and the reason for that is that way you have a more you have more likelihood of this edge here actually contacting this edge here for a nice tight wing root seam line. Now I may have to do a little bit more. No, it's pretty good. The bottom's not too bad. I could do a little bit more and I probably will just to tighten it up further. But uh, it really helps and it minimizes the need to fill and rescribe the wing root. Because I, I hate doing that. So that's that. One more thing on the wings. You need to determine what uh, wing stores you're going to do and there are holes that have to be drilled from the inside clearly labeled in the instructions and uh, you just need to decide what you're going to do drill the holes from the inside because there's recesses that the drill bit fits in and you've already got the holes ready to go I also got the uh, prop um, painted I still need to use, do the uh, yellow tips on the blades but I'm not going to do that till I paint the yellow on the fuselage that way I'm you know not mixing paint cleaning having to do the same color again so that's ready to go I've got to get some black brush paint now I'm gonna have to looks like I'm gonna have to touch up in here a little bit with some black um, I've also got some seams in there now sometimes I can't I just can't see those things until after I get it, you know, primed, and sometimes not until after I even give it get it painted. But I can see it now, so I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to touch that up. But that won't be too difficult because I can just tape these off and spray it again. And for that, I used uh, MRP Silver. Um, main reason is it doesn't have to be thinned. You just spray it right from the bottle. No muss, no fuss. I also got the wheels and the tail wheel painted I used MRP tire rubber uh, for the wheels and then I used the MRP silver for the hubs and the small gear portion there the engine uh, I've got the cylinders painted so now I need to paint the rest the rest of the uh, The gearbox and the sorted little bits there now this is like you know you're not going to see a whole lot of that you're basically going to see probably about that much of it right there so the cylinders not so big of a deal but for that i used the mrp um, steel and it got some pretty good relief with the uh, cooling fins and all that stuff so just be a matter of painting the rest of this and we shall be good to go for the engine what else um now here's something that's interesting is there is uh not a real positive there's no locating points for this For this windscreen there are some very faint lines engraved that it's supposed to line up with and part of that disappeared in sanding I mean there's still some left there but it is very very faint so I'm gonna have to be really careful when I glue this on here because I do not want to uh, do not want to have it misaligned or anything like that but it basically goes right there and then this will go here but I need to paint um, the olive drab here first and I think I'm going to tape this off here and paint that black it doesn't specify in the instructions what to do with that but you know it's generally Generally, the uh, 
that upper part right there is generally black on most US aircraft and whether or not that's right or not I'll look on some uh, what you call uh, uh, photos online and see what it has to show and then then I can glue that into place and yeah but I'm gonna have to tape all this off because this whole strip here is supposed to be olive drab so this is gonna be one of the last parts that goes in place but may even do this we'll see but anyway the glass fits good it's nice and tight and smooth so We'll be able to glue those on there with no problems. All right, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So I think what I'm gonna do is uh, stop this vid video here um, with these sub-assemblies being completed. Next time when I come back, hopefully I'll have this painted and uh, I'll be a little bit closer to um, being ready for paint itself. Uh, I might talk a little bit about the weapons and stuff like that, but we'll see what happens on the next video. So anyway, for this one, this is it. So that's it. The end of part one of the Academy. 148 scale Republic P47 in Thunderbolt. So thanks for following me along. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button if you want to follow more. Hit the like button if you liked it. Again, I really don't know what the likes do, but, you know, hey, everybody likes a pat on the back, right? So anyway, hit it up. Stay tuned for part two. As always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and I will see you all on the next one.